Hi guys and welcome back. I've got another Lizman build for you guys today. I'm going to be up against Labilios 333 and it's very elite high elf army. So let's have a little check out of my list and you know, see what I've changed. So as you guys know the big update has happened and this is, believe it or not, my first game since the update. I haven't been able to play the last couple of days so I wanted to you know, try out the Lizman, trying to figure out some new builds. So in the front line I have gone for a mixture of red crested skinks and Saurus Warriors of Shields. And Saurus Warriors, I've always done pretty good against Hyles in general. They can kind of, you know, tear through spearmen and so forth. And they do decent against their elite troops. And the shields just help against missiles. And the little red crested skinks, you know, they're numerous. And they can be a hurt on Hyles with their big great weapons. So a front line of them, just behind, I do have a couple of units of Saurus Spears, you know, with shields. High elves can go very elite with cavs, so I thought best to bring a couple of anti-large tools just in case. And the one on the left-hand side here is the Legion of Shakwa, the Regiment of Renown version. A very cool ability called the Shield of Shakwa, which gives you 44% missile resistance for everyone nearby for a limited time. So they're going to be rolling as bodyguards for big Lord Karak here. Now he has been nerfed in the latest update. He's slightly more expensive and does a little less damage. We're going to see how he fares though, you know, see if he's still pretty damn good. Now on the left hand side I do have some feral cold ones. They're going to be running up through the woods trying to get behind their enemy. And I do have the Umbral Tides. Now I was quite you know, a big fan of these guys anyway. But now that Ancient Salamander has been a bit nerfed, these guys might end up replacing Old Sally in some of my builds. We'll see. We need a bit more you know, practice yet. These guys are anti-large instead of anti-infantry. And they also have Stalk, which is very good, so the opponent can't see them to get nice and close. So they're a bit of a safer pick against people like High Elves, who can go with a lot of ranged tools. Now on the right hand side for my leadership, I do have the Red Crested Skink Chief. He's very popular at the moment. I've got him up on a rip his Ripidactyl here, and he does have the Potion of Strength, just here, and the Opal Amulet. Along with obviously the standard Warrior's Crest, which is just a very good ability overall. I've also got the Clostodon Hunters for the Ripidactyl Rider Regiment Renowned rolling with him. Now if we look at my opponent's build, I thought there must be some type of treachery, you know. Some units hidden in these trees or somewhere hidden in a flank. There's quite a small build, but when you take a closer look, you realise just quite how elite it is. So for the front line, he does have archers with light armour. I'm not sure if the actual light armour is that necessary against Lizardmen, but actually, you know, it could be pretty decent if, you know, I've got Lizard Skinks harassed. So he's so got three units of those. He does have an Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower in the front here, which luckily for me at the moment is obstructed a little bit. He's also got a f ridiculously elite force just behind, with his main line being built up of Swords Masters of Hoef. These guys are, you know, great sword infantry, very elite, very good at tearing through Saurus, and they've got a bit of armour. Plus they hold their swords in this very cool way, a little bit like the Executioners um, for the Dark Elves. They hold them in a very unique, kind of cool style, just trying to show off their own skills. In the back, he does have two units of Phoenix Guard. Great at taking down those big dinosaurs, anti-large, very late, barely ever run away. He's got two units of those. And for his leader, he does have Tessalus right here on his little horse. You know, just getting ready to cast some spells. Tessalus is pretty damn good uh, for, for, you know, for a pointy-eared Elflin anyway. I prefer more Combat Lords or Alephan Nar when I play them, but we'll see how he gets on. So as you can see... Obviously, I notice he has the range advantage here and start moving up my entire army. I was hoping to, you know, drag my opponent down into the water, where the skinks, if they're aquatics, might have a tiny bit of a bonus. But, oh well. So, the feral cold ones are moving up on the left-hand side, just trying to get behind and do a bit of pressure. You see my little flying goon squad is trying to come down a long arc round the opponent to avoid these archers. And I can see he's actually tearing up one of my front units here, the Red Crested Skinks. So hopefully I thought by bringing him in the side, it might distract him and force him to pull some back. The Umbral Tide has started unleashing some shots from their wooded, you know, hidey hole here. Now these guys are meant for anti-large, but obviously they still do a lot of damage. They're still, you know, big flaming balls coming at you. So they still do some damage to his lightly armoured target. So the Phoenix Guards do pop forward to try and slow down my Red Crested Skinks. Who are just running headlong into this big old mass to shut down everything. Now you do have the first deliverance of Itza coming in here. Boom, that is the big version still. And as you can see, it tears apart these archers, the Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower, and pretty much ruins these Swords Masters of Hoef. So it's still a very powerful spell, you know, even with the nerf. My Flying Goon Squad has popped on top of Teclas here, with me trying to hunt him down. I did see him on his own. But my opponent does respond, and my units do get kind of caught up a little bit on these archers, 
and these Phoenix Guard are going to be running in. My opponent does net these troops there. It's a very nice play by my opponent. Nets these large targets and then shoots them and charges in the anti large Phoenix Guard. The front line is not going too badly for me at the moment. Yes, it's, you know, he's got a lot of elite troops. However, uh, the delivery it's a popping down like this one over here. Still doing a lot of damage. My little skinks are, you know, trading upwards fairly effectively. I've got two units of Saurus here, kind of bodied onto the Swordsmaster 2 for one of them. And there's still a lot of fire incoming from the Umbral Tide. I think we've got another Deliverance of Itza here. I believe this is the small one here, so just the cheaper version of the spell. Popping these Phoenix Guard trying to do a bit of damage. And you can see it does, it does a decent amount of damage. Now Teclis did get caught out of position and the Red Crest is going to all his buff and he'd managed to jump onto him. Now as a classic high LP is, he's going to be running away on his little pony there. And I'm going to be chasing him down with the Red Crested Skink. There's no point, you know, I don't, really don't want to bring him back. There's no point chucking him into the front at the front up against these Phoenix Guards. So I might as well chase off Teclis and really get the, you know, good value for me. So the Saurus Warriors are coming back and the numbers are starting to, you know, Pay pretty good dividends now. Pop onto these swords masters who are very elite, but however, Saurus, you know, they're no pushovers either and they will always do a ton of damage. They've got these Umbral Tides, you know, 360 no scoping from point blank range into these Phoenix Guard. I'm not sure if Phoenix Guard have fire resistance, I feel like they should do, just because they're called Phoenix Guard. I'll have to look that up actually, but um, I'm still doing a ton of damage into them. And another deliverance of bits are coming down just to try and finish off these units. Now in the back, the requested Skink Chief has chased off Teclas for good, and he's going to be coming back trying to get into this main fight. The Colossodon Hunters did survive barely, and they're going to be chasing off these archers. You know, I don't want them chucking them into the front line. Even against Swords Masters, they will get torn up with the limited amount of health they have, so chucking them onto the archers is just free value. Feral Cold ones are still going, actually. I'm quite impressed with these guys. Been fighting, you know, elite infantry most of the game. They are rampaging, they're going to be charging into this last brave Phoenix Guard trying to hold the line as flaming shots are coming into them. And there we go, guys, a Pyrrhic victory. So, that's my first game on the new update. So, it's quite interesting, you know, just to try it out a bit of a different build. This isn't a build I've been practicing with or anything. I just hopped online and just, you know, built it as I went. So, well played to my opponent there, Labilos333. Hopefully, that's how you say your name. I really like this build actually, it's quite an elite high elf build, it's nice to see something which isn't just spearmen and archers. And I understand why he took, you know, took most of these units. Swordmasters are very good against Saurus Warriors, Phoenix Guard are very good at taking down the big dinosaurs, and then he's got a nice little bit of range. This would probably be very effective against my standard uh, Lizardman build, you know, with all the Temple Guard and the big dinosaurs. You get the Phoenix Guard to take down the big dinosaurs and the Swordmasters to deal with the Temple Guard. So very nice build by my opponent. Now for me, everything worked fairly effectively. The Red Crested Skink Chief didn't get any kills, but he did do a massive hurting on Teclas and chase him off. So he kind of paid for himself anyway. Lord Korak, so even with you know, the nerves he's had recently, still was pretty damn powerful. The big Deliverance of Itza and the middle one did huge amounts of damage, especially that first one. Pretty much took out, out a unit of Swords Masters of Hoeth. A unit of archers and the eagle claw bolt thrower, so good value there. However, the small, really cheap deliverance of it so it didn't seem to do much damage at all against these elite Phoenix Guard. I'm not sure if they have any magic resistance or if you know it does less damage against more elite units. We'll have to try out and you know test the spell a few more times. But he's still very, very good. Now I quite like saturating the Saurus and the Red Chris Skinks together. They work quite well, you know, these guys got do you know, anti-armor, pack wire punch, and these guys are better at the cheaper, you know, tearing through those cheap light armored infantry, plus the shields, you know, give you a little bit of leeway when it comes to mass archer fire. Everything else performed pretty good as usual, and I'm a big fan of the Umbral Tides, you know, there was no good targets for them this game, apart from maybe Teclis, you know, on his horse, who it does technically count as large, but they still got 66 kills against some pretty elite troops, plus the fact they have Stork, you know, they can get in nice and close avoiding all these archers. So very well played to my opponent, for a lot of honour, hope to see him again. Now guys, I've had a few tiny problems with YouTube, so sometimes when I comment, you know, and try and reply to some of the comments you guys are leaving, mine appear on my screen, but if I sign out of YouTube and look on the comment section, my comments are completely invisible, so if you guys have left comments, 
I do try and reply to all of them. So if you haven't again replies, it's simply because YouTube, for some reason, is blanking them. So this is something I'm going to try to sort out over the next couple of days. I need to message YouTube and really try and get on top of this. So apologies if you guys think I'm ignoring you. I'm not. Really appreciate all the support. So please keep you know liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. It's, it means a lot to me. It's really good. So now there was a comment on my last video. I can't I'll quickly actually check up who did it. Okay, up on my phone right here. Uh, I'm going to my latest video. Duck of War. So it was on my Wood Elf gameplay video, and I got a comment. Let's pop down to the comment section from Briggsy55, uh, who said, Brill, as always, what's the best Wood Elf build for someone starting out in multiplayer? Well, Briggsy, I will show you a couple of builds right now. So it really does depend massively on who you come up against. You know, if you come up against dwarves, it's going to be completely different than if you come up against lizardmen, like how you want to play it. Now, build I quite like and I recommend is one I used previously on the channel, where you take a Ryan who's super tanky, especially with the Cloak of Isha. Now, you always want to take this item, in my opinion. It's definitely worth the cost. It replenishes your hit points once you get below 20% and gives you a massive damage resistance. You know, your opponent thinks they've nearly finished him, they chuck everything into him and he just won't die. He's hugely tanky. Then you take the Horn of the Wild Hunt here which is map-wide, 54% charge bonus, which is just ridiculous. Then you're going to want to take you know, a front line of Dryads. So say 4 for now, maybe, yeah, maybe go 5. So these guys are kind of damage dealers. They don't have much protection against you know, range fire, but they can Vanguard, so you chuck them in the front line straight away, right up in the enemy's face. Then you follow that up with a couple units of Wild Riders. Let's go for 4 there. I quite like the Regiment Renowned version as well, it's a bit tanky. So let's make these guys with shields. And then you're going to want a spell caster as well. It's quite a small elite army. I should get those guys as well. So I always recommend as well getting at least one unit of Azrite Spears. The Lurks Tricks are great for your anti large. And then get a spell singer of life. Rack on a horse. It's always good to have your mages on a horse because they're quite squishy. You don't want to get them picked off. You don't know fast. You don't be able to keep up with the main fight. Now, a good thing for new players to kind of know is don't take every single spell in a law. You're simply not going to have enough winds of magic to use all these spells. So just take the key ones that you want. For this build, I'd probably just go for the healing. So you've got quite a small elite army here. So we're over by 20 points. Let's just take out that. And let me probably make you guys a little more elite. There we go. So this is quite a good starter army. What you want to do is chuck the drives into Vanguard. Uh, immediately you're kind of trying to hit the enemy front line. At the same time, this is going to be the bit the tricky side of it. Trying to hit the enemy either in the front line with the Wild Riders, or if they're, you know, someone like High Elves and they have a lot of missile play, hit into the sides. And just before everything hits together, you come to Orion here and you pop the Horn of the Wild Hunt. It gives a massive charge bonus. And all of a sudden, you know, these fairly cheap Dryads become absolute monsters and should just tear your opponent apart quite nicely. Now this can be a little bit tricky if it's your very first time playing multiplayer, but it's not a too bad start for just, you know, basic wood elves. If this is your first game ever and you've never hopped on multiplayer before, I'd recommend someone like Durfu instead. He's very tanky and he's also your wizard, so you don't have to micro too many people. So once again, I'd probably take out a few of the spells. Though these are the kind of the competitive spells, which is Summon Manticores, Flock of Doom is your damage dealer, you know, your general buff here. And then, hmm, how else would I play this? I mean, you can take Eternal Guard, which are quite, you know, resilient and good at holding the line. So you can take a few units of these guys, just to hold the front line, and then get a few units of Archers. So I quite like the Starfire Shards for extra missile damage. Three units isn't too hard to protect, especially with such a big front line. To do with enemy Cav, you probably need... I mean, these guys are Spears already, but they can get run over, you know, they're pretty flimsy. So it might be a good idea just to take a couple of units of Treekin as well. Then you can really kind of build out from here. You can use this as the main base. You know, you have your front line quite wide, fairly sturdy. You're very powerful, Lord, and a few missiles. Now, where would I go from here? I mean, it could be quite fun using a tree man, actually, or a forest dragon. They can be a little hard and squishy to use sometimes. Let's have a little look through. I quite like Azrai Spears. So I'll probably get like two more of those for anti-large. 
And let's go for a way watch. Way stalker. Way stalker's always fun. So you know, like a skirmish lord, you can just pop them shooting at any characters and so forth for most of the game. Let's upgrade these guys a little bit. So something like this might be fairly decent for a new beginner. You have a nice big, you know, sturdy front line. You have some anti-large. You've got some nice missiles and not too many to protect. You should be able to protect them very comfortably with this many spearmen. Use the tree kin as a bit as a roadblock and then big dirt food to come in and do the damage. So hopefully this has helped you man. Um, if not, or if you just want to play some games, just send me another message on YouTube, you know, down in the comments. I'm always happy to play some one-on-one -on -one games with you. If you want to try out some Woodhouse Fields, I can try some Woodhouse Fields out against you. So just let me know. Um, also, I'm hopefully going to be doing a Beginner's Cup fairly soon. So bringing in just four players who haven't really played my player too much. And pitting them against each other and casting them. We'll have, we have a few rules, but it mainly just be all for fun. And it'd be a good opportunity for anyone who doesn't play my player to hop in. So if anyone wants to do that, just message me down below, including Briggsy. If you want to get involved, just let me know, man. Alright guys, cheers for tuning in. Peace, peace. See you next time.